Motor Sports. Here with Greg Emerson. Maybe we're getting close to the end of the season. I mean, I know I shouldn't be so excited about the end of the season coming, but this is the time of year where the points battles get heated up. The racing just seems to be taken up a notch, you know, and uh, you know, some great racing all around the state this past weekend. Yeah, some of the some of the point things are done as far as Thursday Thunder and some of the other ones, but uh, yeah, it was great racing all the way around. How about uh, normal? Everybody thought we were going to get rained out, but it never yeah. happened. How about the Prince of Oxford Plain Speedway, Jeff Taylor. I mean, I don't. I mean, they call Mike the King. We can't have two kings, right? Well, right. yeah, King one, King one, King two. I guess we'll call him King two. But Jeff Taylor, nine-time track champion, you know, Jeff Taylor, winning the act race. You know, little vindication up there from the 250. You know, had a right, yeah. good piece at the 250, backing up his act race at Beechridge two yeah. weeks earlier, three weeks earlier. So. You know, that man's still getting it done. You know, yep. not that he's older and stuff, but, you know, he took a couple of years away from racing. You know what I think is a great story about Jeff Taylor is the fact that he was always a pro stock guy. He was a pro stock guy. He built pro stock cars. He still builds pro stock cars, some of the fastest ones around. Yeah. But he knew his late model program was lacking. So what's he do? He builds himself a late model, goes back racing at Oxford, and, and, Figures it out. Got some. He's got and some good he, guys in his camp too. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, you know, Glenn Luce, I think, ended up with the top five yep. finish up there at Oxford. Runs. Runs yep. Jeff's stuff. You he know. Yeah. Fifth. Yeah. So I. I mean, it's just the guy is still behind the wheel. You know, under the helmet. You know. Right. The welding helmet, and uh, you know, it had to be a big deal for him. You know, winning yeah. the act race on his home home court. Finally, yeah, like you said, it was finally a little redemption for him. I mean, but he's out. He's run good there oh, forever. Yeah. No, exactly. So congratulations to Jeff, you know, and then, you know, down to Beatridge Saturday night, you know, Team Naughty Forty, I gotta get, you know, I'll give you credit what credit is. <laughs> you know, all three of them out there at Happy Half Hour, that's a big, that's a big deal. Yep, you know? that was, uh, it was a good night for us, you know. Laura got her first uh, heat win under a belt, yeah. got a little vindication for how her season's gone, yeah. and, and we got a heat win. I don't know if that was a new, uh, record type thing or history husband history wife. husband and wife winning heat in corp not but yeah we had a good car unfortunately we got dan earned his wings about six laps into the race yeah, you know and, and i'll tell you you know laura really impressed me in her race you know because yeah. about 10 15 to go she dropped back into that seventh eighth range yeah. sally was there there was a couple others and they were you know it was just racing but it was beating and banging yeah and i could tell laura was flustered it was like you know, when I talked to her after, and she goes, you're absolutely right. She goes, I was, and then I just composed myself and said, you can do this. She yeah. got back up on the wheel and broke away, and, you know, and yeah. she goes, ends up in the top five. So, you know, what a great, great run for her. But, yeah. you know, I mean, I want to talk about a couple of the great runs I was there. You know, the Pro Series. That's the super late model class. That's right, the top yep. drivers in the track, at the track. You know, Tyler King. Had an issue last week, you know, yeah, Billy he, Rogers had some contact. He's, he's really doing a great job, I think, you know. He's holding his line. He's he's not not getting in anybody's way. And that's all you can ask for as right. a young driver. That's how you gain and earn respect. Right. I mean, he saw us coming last night and moved to the bottom and gave us the lane yeah. that we knew we wanted. You know, because there's going to be a week that, that he's, he's coming. Gonna, and you hope that Dan yeah. McKaig looks at that and goes, you know right. what, this kid is, you know, but there are drivers that don't matter. They'll just, you know, we got a couple of them down Beechridge. They're on their second car, third car, fourth and, car and of the year or whatever. And yeah, they just don't we, get any better. We got to look at these guys because, you know, a year, two years, three years down the road, he's going to be a contender. There's I no doubt about it. I think it's going to be sooner than later. But another guy that really, really impressed me as well as Tyler King was Bobby Timmons. Yeah, that was like, what, his se third, third, second, third? Third start in the Super Late model. Right. Race sixth place legend. finish. Sixth place finish. And he raced to that sixth place yeah. finish. I mean, he passed the Colbys. He passed Billy Rogers. Battling with Steve Carey, yep. a notorious front runner. You know, and uh, a sixth place finish at the end, that, that is huge. He's, for, he's for been doing real good. You know, yep. and then young Bobby, you know, big Bobby they call him. He's not big. His father, you know, owns Timmons Machine yeah. Shop there. And what a great guy. And he, and he has been. And, you know, how this deal all came together, he, you know, for years, Scott Mulkern would go racing with Vicky. The dog Rex, that was it. Then Tony Ricky obviously come into the fold yeah. later on, and he started going. But one other guy that was always there was Scott. Was Bobby. Was Bobby Timmons. 
And then I remember Scott and little Bobby being in some of the pitches when he right. was 11, 12 years old. Going, right. You know, so, you know, Scott and Vicky kind of, I'm not saying there was any favors due or any repay, but you know what? They helped the kid out. Helping, and, helping and that's good. Little you know? Bobby out, you know, yeah. and more or less probably for an appreciation towards what his father has always been. And, you know, Big Bobby, and I, it sounds funny calling me, calling Big Bobby Tim and <laughs> Big Bobby, but, you know, Big Bobby, Little Bobby. You know, it, and it showed the kid has got some tremendous talent behind the wheel. You yeah. Know? And his dad, and we've had talks over the years because I've run a little go kart racing with little Bobby years ago, and you know, we had to win it every all costs. You know, and, and just I think he really realizes now how racing works. And the sooner that these young drivers figure it out that you know, it, to in order to finish first, you first must finish. Right. You know, these other guys that have been in the class for 10 or 15 years have earned. A tremendous amount of respect because you know they've been there that'll be them someday you know and if they race them with respect it's going to come back to them and you know hopefully these older right more yep. experienced drivers at Beatridge see it with these kids um <clears throat> on another note we got to congratulate Aaron Recca oh what a finally you know first first pro stock win uh I had the opportunity Got invited and asked by the Rickers to go spot for him because he ran the South, uh, the North Wilkesboro race. Yeah. So I had an opportunity to work with those guys a little bit, and that's, you know, that's a good opportunity to go. You race against these people, you know, the good people. Yep. This and that, and I got to do that with them. So I was real happy for them. You know, my buddy Jason Rickers, crew chief yep. for him now, and I was I was just real happy for them that he finally. Yeah, Shook so the monkey. there's a couple of pitches here of Aaron and his team, and yep. you know that's a big deal. His mom came over. Pretty excited, yep. and George, and you know, that George was real happy. Always supported motorsports. They've had their cars on display at the Northeast Motorsports yep. Expo, and you know the Portland Show. So have been a big supporter of racing as it, with Beechridge. So congratulations to Aaron Ricker and his whole team. And you know, I had a good experience at Beechridge. And what, you know, I want to mention another thing. And you know, sometimes we go to a racetrack, and I kind of. You know, obviously the racing's the racing. You watch it, you follow it, you know. But I always look for the little things, you know, like, you know, the guys that... What stands out. Yeah, what stands out. You know, the thing that I think impressed me the most, other than them two young drivers in the Pro Series division, was when they did driver introduction last night in the Roadrunner class. They had right? the they had the Roadrunners, was, the, was that featured... The feature event. Right. So they brought the drivers out, stood them out next to their car, did yep. the driver introduction. Four drivers, I'm going to give you their names. It was Kerry Thibodeau. Tasha Daya, Nicole Timmons, and Dave Turner. Now we say, wow, that's all girls. No, no, three girls and Dave Turner, right? As every driver in that pack, they start at the back, come forward, yep. was introduced. All four of those drivers acknowledged their competitors by clapping for them and stuff. Now, obviously, they've had, I mean, that track has got more drama than Days of Our Lives. Okay? In that and division. In that division. That's been, that's been a drama-filled division all year. Right. And obviously, the girls have been involved in it. Everybody's been involved in it. Right. But for them to stand there, and they don't have to clap. They could stand there with their hands down. And I'm not saying the ones that didn't clap did anything wrong. Right. But to see those people. They just took an extra step. To acknowledge their competitors. And say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna clap. You know, it, that, that, I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah, that neat. is cool. You know, I just picked up on that, and you know, and maybe some other people noticed it. Maybe others didn't. But to me, that was a big deal. That showed respect right, towards yep. the other competitors. And it was a good race. Ryan Phillips picked up the win. You know yep. what I mean? And on the last lap. Last lap. And what? Tasha did a real good job. Tasha and did a great job. Hung on for second. Yeah. You know, congratulations to her. But you know, here's Ryan Phillips, and uh, you know, he just. The point leader, adding to his point just leader. Just rode on the outside, and when yeah. it came, he and that got was, it. You know what? The race the other night was the Roadrunner racing I remember from two or three yeah. years ago when I thought that was the best class down there. Then it got away from it, and he said, she said, ma, wah, 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 you know, and all that. Well, maybe now they'll get back to it, and they'll all put their big boy pants on. Instead of wah, 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 you should have, like, the typing from keyboard sounds oh, on yeah, it. Oh, yeah, you know. Because that's what it, that's oh, where yeah. it boils well, down great to. Great job to all the competitors there the other night. And uh, well, we got a great show planned today, Greg. We got yep. some highlights from Summerfest. Yep, that was you know, a great time. Two weekends ago. Yep. and. Uh, yeah, it was an awesome time. You know, Dave come down and we did some interviews. Willie went around, got some stuff. Yep. And then th last Thursday, I went over and the state officially crowned their first champions of the year, the Thursday Thunder Crowd yep. at Beach Ridge. And what a great time it was. Great crowd on hand and some great racing. You know, a couple of the battles, you know, oh, this one's a leader now. This one's going to be a champion. Oh, this one. And what more can you ask for in the last right, race? Right, yeah. It makes it super exciting. Yeah. You know, when especially when the announcer's hyping it up and, and everything's going down. Yeah, and, no, you're right. 
you know. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to go right into some highlights from Summerfest. Five years ago, I went shopping for my family's first camper. I didn't like the prices, and I didn't like the way I was treated. A year later, I opened up Scotts Recreation. Today, Scotts Recreation is Maine's exclusive multi-line Heartland dealer, along with being Maine's number one fifth wheel dealer two years in a row. Browse through the new 2012 Heartland models or take advantage of closeout prices on 2011s. Scotts welcomes almost anything in trade, financing available too. Scotts Recreation, Route 202 in Manchester, and their new Turner location on Route 4. All of us at Moody's Collision Centers would like to thank you for supporting us for over 30 years. We all own stock in Moody's and have a vested interest in you and your vehicle. The people at Moody's Collision Centers are part of the community and our reputation is very important to us. We take pride in our work and guarantee our repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. At Moody's Collision Center, we care about our customers. So when your insurance company asks where you want to go, tell them Moody's, Moody's Collision, Collision Centers. Centers. Four convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, and now Portland. Stay right there, buddy. Thank you. We got Dave Kunamash coming out, hopefully. Dave Kunamash. Dave Kunamash. Dave Kunamash. All right, Dave Kunamash. <laughs> Next, we have Ralph Cusack. Ralph Cusack. Remember you speak. Where are they going? Dave Davo. Right center. Do a little dance. Yeah. Go ahead. Is that all you want? Can I leave, Joe? You can go. Yeah, go. <laughs> Next, we have Al Hammond. Al Hammond. Thank 
Next we have Goodwin Hannaford. Goodwin Hannaford. Captain Goodwin. <laughs> Next we have Gardner Levitt. Gardner Levitt. Gardner Levitt. There he is. I think, as most of you probably realize, uh, Gardner and June's son, Steve, made the trip all the way up from North Carolina for some of us, so we're certainly delighted to have uh, Steve come up for this and uh, have the replica of the 35 bomber of Gardner. Next, we have Dick McCabe. Dick McCabe. Don't get me. Keep it here. <laughs> <laughs> Dick is also Dick is also a member of the New England Auto Racers Hall of Fame. Next we have Russ Nutting. <laughs> Next, Calvin Reynolds. There we go. Watch your head. I'm gonna pull a Kyle Edwards. <laughs> On a second thought, I think I'll just make a bow. <laughs> Next, we have Jerry Seedy. Jerry. And last but not least, Dick Wilson. Have we missed anybody? Because we don't want to do that. As far as we know, those are the Hall of Fame members with us today. I hope we haven't missed anyone. We certainly don't intend to. So thank you for the warm welcome for each one of these people that I consider foundation builders for racing in Maine. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice-cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself. Just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Clark's Car Crushing has been a family-owned and operated business since 1978. We do everything from crushing cars, handling industrial scraps, to buying the scrap metal right out of the back of your pickup. Copper, brass, stainless steel, aluminum, you name it, we'll buy it. We have roll-off containers of all sizes for industrial accounts. We'll handle the legwork with full drop-off and pickup services. So for a professional job, guaranteed honest weights, and top dollar paid statewide, come see the Clark family in Farmingdale, Maine. Clark's Car Crushing. Don't fix it, scrap it. All of us at Moody's Collision Centers would like to thank you for supporting us for over 30 years. We all own stock in Moody's and have a vested interest in you and your vehicle. The people at Moody's Collision Centers are part of the community and our reputation is very important to us. We take pride in our work and guarantee our repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. At Moody's Collision Center, we care about our customers. So when your insurance company asks where you want to go, tell them Moody's, Moody's Collision Center. Centers. Four convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, and now Portland. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Scott's Recreation. Now at three convenient locations. Go to scottsrecreation.com to view our inventory. Award Champs, the official award supplier of Mainly Motorsports. Now, Greg, here was some photos and highlights of the day, and what a great time it was at Summerfest, huh? Yeah, it's always a good time at Summerfest. I mean, you get to see the old races enjoying each other. I mean, some of the guys used to smash doors and <laughs> beat each other up and stuff, but now they're all buddies eating hamburgers together oh, yeah, and stuff, yeah. you know? And I think that's the thing that I most enjoy about down there, is the guys that might have been my heroes, might yeah. have been my villains, but just to see them out there walking around and like, you know, that, that, that guy got it done yeah. in yesteryear, you know? And, and uh, coming up in a couple weeks, uh, we got a piece with Rick Zemla that yeah. we caught up with that had two of the most dominating years that I can remember 
anybody ever having at Beach Ridge back in 1982 and 83. Yep. You know, and then a guy by the name of Jimmy Riley. People don't know who Jimmy Riley is, but they're going to look at what he restored and who, you know, a car that he did and the history that car had down there. The Fast Five. You know what I mean? Yep. So, I mean, just so much stuff down there. And I mean, the ride along. And, and a lot of people will be like, oh, that's Jimmy Riley. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then the, the, the ride alongs they did for the kids. Yep. And there was a couple of adults, uh, Brick being one of them, that got a ride along, you know what I mean? Um, but, With Lyman. <laughs> geez, unbelievable. And then uh, Goodwin Hannaford, you know, was able to put some, uh, let Willie put a couple of cameras on his car and yep. you know, going around. And I can tell you, let's tell you something about Goodwin Hannaford. The guy's got a modified, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, if you can fit in it, you can drive it. So yeah. you let everybody, you know. That's a shame about being our size. We're limited to what we're going to get in. But man, when I love to get into that, you know, the yeah. car and go around there. But, you know, get some on track footage of the cars going around and then the food. I mean, how can you beat the food? Yeah, you know? it was good. It was a good time oh, all around. You only have one hamburger and hot dog your first time through. But boy, and I'll tell you what, when they hollered that, hey, soup's open, kitchen's open, come again. Right. And I shouldn't say this on the air, but I'm going to tell you, the guy that was beat feeding it across the. the, the the pits, and I ain't, I ain't saying he was headed for that line, but we had a conversation at 250, and he was telling me how he was trimming and slimming, but old Kenny Lamb was headed for the spook stack <laughs> again, right? I look at him go, but you know what it is, and you know, the Hall of Fame trailer, and you know, get ready, folks, because they change it around, and change it yep. around, and change it around. And, and uh, uh, I, uh, I actually had a good conversation with uh, Bruce Elder, and he said some stuff to me about getting guys my, you know, talk to me more about getting guys my age that's what's gonna keep to going. uh, become members of the uh, Main Vintage Race Car Association stuff. And uh, I actually, I bought my membership the other day at the thing, and, and then I told Bruce the other night at the track that, hey, I bought my membership, and he's like, that's the way to do it, you know. No, so it is. They, they all do a great job. You know, and, Dale, and Dale over there with the trailer, what a phenomenal, you know, and I know yeah. John Peck, they got a lot of people that help, and that's what's good about an organization like that, it's a lot of help in hand, that wouldn't have been pulled off with one or two people. No, no, no. You know? I mean, you saw Andy Cusack riding around in, in the golf cart with the work gloves on, yeah. changing trash bags. Changing trash bags. You, I'm, know. you know, that just shows you that it's that kind of event, and we, uh, you know, you got to respect that, and you got to go down and enjoy it. I think... You know, you talk about old races talking about different things. Here's my one story from that day. I was standing talking to Mike. We were over by the old Fast Five, and Al Hammond walks up and goes, that's the thing that used to cut my right front tire. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's the jack post that used to cut oh, my right yeah. front tire. Well, Mike, he's pretty sly. <laughs> but we did catch up with some people. We'll have them throughout the next few weeks. But, right. Uh, this week we're going to show a piece with Melvin Dobbins, who... Uh, you know, he's in the restoration. He used to be heavily involved with Bob Libby's Good Wrench Racing Team. He is yep. down there. But uh, Melvin's done some great things. The, the old Armin Holly car was there, the old Snap 6, and, yep. you know, the 22 Coupe, a home and Drew. You know, and he's got a couple other projects coming up. And uh, we're going to let Melvin tell you everything he's got going on and the people that really help him out. So enjoy what Melvin has to say about his involvement with Main Vintage. Yeah, he's a great guy. We're here with Melvin Dobbins, and Melvin is one of the biggest supporters of this vintage organization and keeping the spirit alive of racing from yesteryear. And you got three cars over here on display, Melvin. And why don't you why don't you take us through each car individually and talk about the history of the car and and the people that have obviously worked with you to put these things back together. Well, uh, first of all, I got the 22 over there, uh, Homer Drew. Um, I had a couple of guys help me. I have Francis Sear, a good friend of mine, does the lettering and stuff on it and Joe Gardner. Um, the car run out here to Beecher's quite a few years. Um, Homer won the championship in 72 in that car. And uh, I also have uh, the Snap 6 over here, which everybody's familiar with that car. That, that car, just about everybody drove that car. Um, uh, I, got it, I got it listed as Jeff Stevens. Uh, we lost Jeff just past year, and uh, he run quite a bit of, of that car here. I talked to Jeff before he passed. He said he won over 100 features in just that car here alone. And so uh, that, that car means a lot to me. Uh, again, uh, Francis and, and Joe did help me uh, uh, build that car also. And that's just a replica. Um, I talked to Dave Snap, and everything goes okay. We're trying to get Dave Snap here next year at Summerfest. And then uh, this is my latest car here, which is the three that uh, Armin Holly drove here in 78. Uh, uh, the car went, Steve, it went pretty good, uh, but not great because the car's too low. 
low to the ground. So um, uh, he run here one year, and then he took it to Oswego. In uh, um, I don't know much history about the car. I just like the looks of it. Uh, but uh, you know, and, and we got right now. We got another car. We're doing the Walsingham car, the sedan. Uh, that's going to be done for uh, the show in up in Augusta this year. Um, but other than that, things are going good. Uh, a lot of cars being built, and I just love the history. Yeah, and, and you talked about this car being low. People might not realize back in 78, Beechridge was clay. It wasn't yes, it asphalt. Was. Yes, it was clay. And and that was the problem, Steve, that they had. The car was too low, and there was a lot of bumps, and it upset the car a lot. And uh, that and they'd, they'd raise the car up, but when you raise the car up, you change the geometry of the car, and it just didn't go good. Uh, they At Oswego, New York, and Lee, the car was a rocket because uh, it's asphalt. But uh, yeah, it, it was it was good, um, and I like bringing back some different cars, Steve. Uh, you know, there's a lot of coupes, but I like bringing back some different cars. Uh, I like to talk to Dave Kudamash a little more about the Pinto. Uh, 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 that's that's still alive, uh, needs some work. But I like to talk to Dave, see if we can hook up a deal, and see if we can get that car done. You know. Yeah, because there's a lot of memories here. You know, and and uh, you know from anybody that sat in the grandstands back in the 70s, early 80s, 60s. You know, and they look at these cars. I mean, it brings back childhood memories. And then you guys and this whole organization, you're, you're fulfilling a lot of dreams still. You know. Yeah, it, it is, Steve. Uh, what I do, I build the cars. I don't build them for myself. I build them for the driver, the car owners, fans. Uh, I've had a lot of people come over and uh, just say that they just thank thank us for doing this uh, because it is really cool of building a car for a particular driver like Jerry Seavey here today. You know, I uh, had a hip operation, but he's here today. He's honored of having the 22 J2 here. It's just been a it's been a good ride. I'm telling you, it's been a good ride. No, oh, that's good. And I know us, me as a race fan, not only the TV show, but as a race fan, really appreciates what you do out there. And, uh, and you know, your display at these events and anything you do is always one of the most talked about and the most viewed. Everybody stops and looks because you really take your time and do a great job with it. Well, I appreciate that. You know, we, we are trying to do something different every time for the fans. And it's all about the fans, Steve. It's not about us. It's about the fans and the guys that worked in the car, owners. And, uh, you know, anybody needs any help of, of building a car, don't hesitate to give us a call because we've got parts and we love to get more cars done. Yeah, no, that's true. And you do put a big effort in. And obviously, like you said, you mentioned some people that, that put some effort in to help you yes. get these done. So I appreciate it, Melvin, and uh, look forward to seeing your next project and many more projects down the road. Great. Thank you, Steve. All right, thanks, Melvin. Yeah, thanks. Hey, I'm Kyle Bush, and when I'm in Maine, I watch mainly motorsports. Have a ticket but need a ride? Let VIP take you to the hottest events, including Entertainer of the Year, Taylor Swift, at Gillette Stadium, June 25th and 26th. Or Country Music Superstar and Grammy Award winner, Kenny Chesney, August 27th. And September 25th, don't miss the NASCAR Sylvania Sprint Cup at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Leave the driving to VIP and let VIP take you to the hottest events. Call or reserve online at VIPchartercoaches.com. At Southern Maine Motors, we're celebrating Jeep's 70th anniversary with our spring events. Get the vehicle you want at a price no one else can touch. Like a 2011 Jeep Compass, leased for only $239 a month for 39 months. Or a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee, leased for only $299 a month. Plus, right now, used car values are at an all-time high. Bring in your own vehicle and drive off in a brand new car. With savings this big, it's no wonder Southern Maine Motors is out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealer. Visit SouthernMainMotors.com. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you this week by LKQ. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Route 202, Gorham. To order copies of a show, send a check or money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports, 326 Roosevelt Trail, Wyndham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show. Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports, and you know this time of year we talk about it, just so much stuff extra going on. You know, Labor Day weekend is like it's know, right around the corner. You know, it used to be then school started after, but now school's starting before. But yay! You know, <laughs> one of the big deals going on that weekend is up there at the Oxford Mud Runs, which is at Scotch Trailer Sales, which is right there. Depending on it's next to Walmart, it's either after or before, depending on which, which way, way you're coming from on 26. But, uh, you can't miss it. It's got Scotch Trailer Sales, got the storage buildings out there, and they're doing. 
the big guns shootout, $7,300 in purse money for, you know, just... Right, and they got, they got nine divisions that week, so people. So if you got something you think it'll go through the mud, you got, bring it. You got something you think will go through the mud and you ain't afraid to get muddy. Yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you what, I've, I've been up there, I've been in, I've been in this pink truck, the purple truck you see on screen right now, Ray Penfold's and Billy Penfold's truck. Is Big Ray going to be up there? Big Ray will be there in attendance, you know. How old is Big Ray now? I think he's 82 or 83. And he's still getting it done. And speaking of the main Vintage Hall of Fame, here's my shout out to you guys. Big Ray needs to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Guy's still getting it done at 80 something years old, winning races on the mud run. So that's my shout out. I'm not sending any nomination papers in because I don't have time. But Big Ray needs to be in the Hall of Fame. So, but that's going to be great. Scott Sessions, his whole group, his family, they're just doing a great work. You'll see on screen there some of the, you know, the big important things going on. The dates, September 3rd and 4th, you know, yep. Saturday, Sunday. You know, where it's located. You know, they got a, they got a Facebook page. It's Oxford Mud Run. Yep. And uh, they got a contact info. If you want to email them, it's OxfordMudRun at AOL.com. Yeah, so there's just... Nine divisions, payback to the top five, some gift certificates. They got a bunch of sponsors kicking yeah, in, it's helping a, out. What is it, like a $7,300 minimum purse yeah, or something so like that? That's pretty good payday yeah, for us. There's going to be some cash flowing, some mud flying, yeah. probably some BS swelling. Oh, yeah, and some girls screaming. So It is the big gun shootout. The big gun shootout. So let's see if the big guns are out up there at Oxford Mud Run. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Greg, we're going to hear from our Thursday Thunder champions and see how they... Uh, how so they're all pretty excited. A yeah. champion, and you know, a couple of them are pretty special to them. So we're gonna take a break, and we'll be right back on mainly motorsports. Teacher, car salesman, take advantage of me. You didn't go to Ospi Trail? No, I went to the other guys. Mm, other guys. <clears throat> <laughs> Don't bother going to the other guys. Go to Ossipee Trail Motor Sales, Route 25, Gorham. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Scott's Recreation. Now at three convenient locations. Go to scottsrecreation.com to view our inventory. Dan Walker, champion at Beach Ridge Speedway. I mean, what's that feel like? Um, it's way more than I thought it was going to be. Um, Started this last year. My son had an extra car. Just wanted to go out and play around this year. I set a goal. I wanted to win a race. Um, you may know I've been around here for a long time. I kind of wanted to get one of Eddie Walsh's checkered flags. That was kind of a goal. Never dreamed that we'd even be a contender for a championship or anything. So it's, uh, it's way more than I ever could have imagined. Um, gives me a whole new respect for these guys that do this on a weekly basis, too. It's... Uh, this is this is an entry level situation, but man, I'm, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> yeah. Now you were one of the original guys that started back when the Wildcat had A, B, C, and D divisions, you know. And then you took some years away from racing. Never got away from racing, but away from the wheel. Like you said, you got back into it, and uh, it's everything you thought it'd be. It's it is. It's um, it's amazing. Yeah, we started with the Wildcat way back. I think it was like '83, '84, something like that. Did that for two or three years, and. That was when uh, Dan McKaig and the Roussels and Steve Berry were just dipping their toe in the water, so I kind of dating myself a little bit. But, yeah, then just uh, focused on the things that I do here at the track. Uh, didn't ever think I would get back behind the wheel again, but, you know, thanks to my son Jeff and Brad Emery and those guys, um, I, I literally just show up here at the racetrack on Thursdays, and uh, I'm just glad, glad for them. Well, it's good for you, and I know there's two people... Rolly and Gloria, they're looking down on you, and uh, yeah. you know, real, real proud of you and everything you've accomplished. Ab absolutely, and uh, that that actually came across the mind tonight. I mean, every time I look over in the grandstands, and you know, my daughter's sitting over there, and now my grandson, and they sit in the same spot that my parents used to, who were out here for years, and uh, I, I think about that a lot. And uh, yeah, that no question, they were definitely looking out for me, especially tonight. Well, now you're a champion. Join your son. Congratulations. Hard to believe. All right. Good job. Thank you, Steve. Yep. All right, Chris. We stood out here last year. You were champion, and you told me you were all done, retiring, had all these big plans, right? 
And now a year later we're standing here and I'm talking he was a champion again. Oh yeah, we uh, decided to build a new car over the winter. I can't thank Spanky and Bubba over there at Performance Race Cars, Trackside Racing Supplies. They built me an awesome car, helped me out all season long, anything I ever needed. So I really can't thank them guys enough. No, and you had a phenomenal year. I mean, it doesn't even look like there's a scratch on the car. So that shows the way you went about winning this championship, and that's the way to do it. Oh, know? yeah, we did it right. We had nine races, nine top threes, three wins. I mean, it was a dream season for us, so it was pretty cool for sure. All right, and you mentioned those guys. There's obviously some other sponsors behind the scenes. I do. Let me take a look, because last year I didn't thank any of them. Uh, Mike Paul Foundations, Ace Hardware, TK Small Engines, JR Repair Service, Trackside Racing Supplies. Performance race cars, Northeast Ice Cream, Mueller Plumbing and Heating. If I forgot anybody, I'm sorry. All right, so what are we doing next year? Uh, I'm not going to come back. No, I will. I think we'll come back and try to make it three in a row for sure. Now, wait a minute. Now, your father retired, right? Yeah, but he went out with a yeah, bang. He went out. Yeah. He was, like, cutting trees and all yeah, that. He and actually, they made a picnic area over there for him. They've donated it to him, the, the Peter's Picnic Area. Peter's there. Picnic Area. For so sure, sure. when you retire, is that how you're going to retire? You're going to retire I, as a champion? I hope so. I hope so. All right, well, congratulations. Thanks again, Steve. Right. Appreciate it. Yep. All right, we're here with the ladies' champion, Caitlin Ridgeway, and it uh, wasn't easy, huh? But you, uh, you capped it off with a top three in a championship run. Yeah, no, it was a crazy year, but I couldn't have done it without everyone, all my fans, and Rob Walker. <laughs> Chief, I'm so excited. No, oh, you should be. I mean, you can now call yourself a champion, you yeah, know? Yeah, yep, yep. So my first win, third year, I'm so excited. No, oh, that's good, and that, that class seems to grow each and every year, and yeah. you got some good competitors. It's not a hit yeah. to win a championship no, in that class. No, tonight was the biggest race that we had this year, so. Yeah, no, and you should be proud, and obviously you've got a bunch of people behind the scenes that are really making this possible for you. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Now, we want to talk about some of your sponsors and who have been with you since the yep. beginning? Yeah, the National Guard, that's my main sponsor, um, the Little Falls Auto, 21st Century Motors, Wyman's. Um, <laughs> I think that's everyone. <laughs> that's everyone. But no, congratulations. Great Thank run. You. What a way to cap off your third year as a champion, huh? Thank you so much. Good job. Thanks. All right, so close last year, Evan. Coming in tonight, you were the chaser again, but uh, I don't know if you had the car to do it, but persistence paid off. Kevin had some bad luck, and you're standing here as a Thursday Thunder champion. Yeah, we had, again, you know, this this car has been awesome all season long. We've had a little bit of a bad luck throughout the year but you know make your own luck and uh yeah going into tonight you know i figured it's all ours to gain and it's you know we we can't lose you know coming from where we were so uh, it did work out we had a great car i think we might have gone up there to dice it out with them you know um but you know doesn't matter now. We're the champion. <laughs> yeah. At one point, it almost looked like you might have made a mistake trying to move, uh, p gain some more position, set to the outside, and you went backwards. Kevin was coming from the back, but uh, you know, all in all, everything worked out, and you got to be really pleased. You know. Yeah. I see him spin out, and you know, first thing in my head, great. I can go for the win now. And uh, I went up there, tried it, and uh, it didn't work. And then I saw Kevin coming. <laughs> I had to drive hard. You know, sitting where I was with a couple laps to, do to go, wasn't going to do it. And uh, we got that last spot there at the end, and it just, it's great. And I just got to thank uh, my great sponsor, Hancock Lumber, Bullier Construction, Cop Excavating, and uh, my great crew here. Uh, my dad, Jeff Martell, helps us out a lot. Uh, Derek and Kyle who come here, my sister and my mom, they're all very proud, and uh, this, is, this is great. All right, well, now you can finally call yourself a legend champion. Yes, sir. I, I'm going gonna, gonna to live it up. <laughs> all right, con congratulations, though. Thank you, Steve. All right. All right, the next Lovejoy to call himself a champion is Adam Lovejoy. And, and talk about the season and then the night you capped it off with a championship. Um, yeah, we started out with a decent car, um, got it better as the year went on, ended up winning six out of nine races, two seconds and a fifth. So it was a good year. Got to thank Richard, Ann, uh, Richard Owen and Ann Merrill for letting me drive the car. They own it. Um, great car, best car I've ever had, obviously. And uh, look forward to running varsity next year. And, See if we can play with the big boys. Yeah, now this is what you call a champion when a guy comes out and wins the race. He doesn't have to win it, but he wins it on the night that he is crowned a champion. Yeah, I came into the race thinking, you know, just do what I always do and hope for the best and ended up working out and ran away with it. All right, well, congratulations on a phenomenal 2011. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to start the run of family domination, and we've caught up with the first champion, Thomas Lovejoy, and what a phenomenal year you had, huh? Thank you. Yeah, we did. Thanks to my brother Jeremy, he set the car up, and I get the privilege of driving it, basically. Yeah, and one of the things that you're fun to watch, you don't, you don't have to use up your stuff to get to the front. No, I try to drive clean. That's the way I want to be run, and I 
try to make my way to the front without using the car up, which you can tell after two years, it's still in well, real good shape. You know, and that's the thing that I, f I find. when You can always tell a guy that drives clean when you come down to these last nights, the championship nights, and uh, nobody's using him up, and people are giving him a break when he needs it because of the way he's treated them over the year. Exactly. I, I like it that way. All right. Well, uh, obviously, there's a lot of people that behind the scenes that make this possible for you. Yeah, I like to thank my wife. I'd like to thank Jim Coffin, Donna Coffin. They're the ones that actually own the car. I get, I get to drive it. A couple of years ago, they said they didn't want to see me get done racing, so they ended up helping me out and helped me build this car. And here it is today. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Travis. You came into the night. They said in practice we had some troubles with the truck. You yep. went out, searched, found another truck, yep. did what you had to do, and you call yourself now a champion. Yeah, thanks to Wade, Wade Hanscom, couldn't have done it without him. He let us use his truck. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's pretty phenomenal because he was up in the top five in yeah, points. Yeah, he was fourth in points and gave it up for me, so I appreciate that. Yeah, now you uh, you kept the guy that you were racing for the championship in sights. Uh, you know, at one point you got a little wide coming off too, and you dropped out of that championship lead, but you didn't lose your composure. You hung on, and then you went back. But talk about the truck that you ran all year. I mean, that thing carried uh, dual championships. Yeah, that, couldn't ask more out of it. I mean, it ran twice a night, four practices a night. It did what it needed to do. It gave up on us tonight, uh, second practice. But I just kept the 21 in my sights and. Race for it. That's all you got to do when it's the last night is keep them in your sights. Yep. All right, congratulations on Thank that you. championship. Thank you, appreciate it. All right. all right, Jeremy, you've raced for many years, and now you get to call yourself a champion. I mean, what's that feel like? Uh, I really can't explain it right now. It's still all so new, but very overwhelming, and I am thrilled. Yeah, I mean, and, and that varsity truck division, let's face it, every year it's Chad Bennett, Tony Field, Chad Bennett, Tony Field, you know. You came in, probably a little sleeper, let them two have their battles, and you just did your thing. Ran up front consistently, week in, week out, didn't rub any fenders, and then, you know, come into the last night with a chance, and you solidified your championship. With a borrowed truck, <laughs> uh, mind you. Uh, it's been a pretty rough day. It's been a very awesome year. I've had a lot of fun. Um, I'm coming back next year, absolutely. This is a, a blast. Yeah, now let's talk about that borrowed truck. I mean, how confident were you? Obviously, that borrowed truck won the JV race, but still, how confident were you getting into that truck, knowing what you had to do to be in the, you know, end up a champion? Not very confident because, as I was saying, everything has gone against us all day. Um, after his race, he realized he blew his clutch, so I had no clutch. So I completely forgot about the championship until them last five, that last restart. restart with six to go, I'm like, I've got a good chance. So. No, that's that's huge, huge for your whole team, your whole family, you know, and that's, that's such a big deal. Yeah, it is. Um, I don't know if anybody had mentioned, but these three well, of my all mentioned. Oh, yeah. I actually, I actually got my new co-host for the show, Lindsay Marcard, everybody really? that's been taking me down. She's getting co comfortable, so the next thing we're going to do is get her in front of the camera instead of behind the camera. So Excellent. I, I need that bubbly blonde, and I think she's going to be it. So All right. All right, but great job to you and everybody behind these, all four of them. You know what I mean? That's that's a huge accomplishment, you know, because I'm sure you, you all help each other in the pits, and sometimes yep. that takes away from your own program. Yep, absolutely. I know my brother on the 22 has felt neglected from time to time with my own truck which there's been situations where he probably has it, it is tough very tough keeping two vehicles going and two of us running this one it's, it's been a tough year but it's been a blast and I very enjoyed it very very much all right well congratulations on your championship thank you thank you thinking about a new camper what if you could get a new camper now and not pay for it till next year now you can at Scotch Recreation Buy a new travel trailer, we'll make your payments until January 2012. Buy any new fifth wheel, we'll make your payments until March 2012. Over 100 units in stock and online at scotchrecreation.com. Camp now, pay later. Scott's Recreation, Route 4 Turner and Route 202 Manchester, Maine. Is it time to replace that old car, but past credit problems are getting in the way? At JQ Motors, credit issues are a thing of the past. We have vehicles for any need. Growing family? How about a minivan? With winter here, come in and browse our great selection of four-wheel drive utilities. With a low down payment, you can qualify for this program despite those past credit issues. That's JT Motors, 650 Roosevelt Trail, Wyndham, where you always drive away with a smile on your face. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Southern Maine Motors. Out to be Maine's number one Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep dealership. 
So we just saw the Thursday Thunder Champs from Beechridge, and congrats to all of them. I'm sure the Lovejoy clan's having a big bash well, somewhere. Done, huh? Yeah, they, I mean, Jeremy Moraz falls in with them, you yeah. know. That four truck won both championships yeah. in the well, trucks. That was, but that was, that was an awesome deal for all of them, you know. Yeah. And, and the Dan Walker one's pretty special because, you know, back when I raced years ago, I didn't have a lot of fans because I sucked. But Dan's parents were, they had my coats, they wore my shirts, come to the mall, saw the cars, come to parties we had, you know, and they were, yeah. you know, we're pretty close with them. So, they, you know, they, that's cool. I remember the night I won my one and only limited sportsman main event, which is now the sports series. And, you know, they were just as happy for me as my own parents. So, right. know, yeah. so it was pretty neat to hear that, you know, and, and remind Dan of that too. So, yep. But getting back to what's coming up now, we got the big John Fippen Memorial 59 lap race at Unity on Saturday night, the 27th. Oh, that's going to be a big deal. You know, they're all getting out there. And they did, These guys just put this together the last few weeks, right? Yeah, you know, and the same group, basically, that, that did the Allen Fletcher Memorial Race last right, year. Yep. now jumped on board and doing something for John. They did want a, a race over at Speedway 95. Yep. You know, it was good, and Hot Rod Hopkins won it. And, you know, and then they're doing... Uh, doing this one and I think it's it's huge you know Wally Gibbons uh, Andy Trask there's a ton of people involved and you know they've put the stuff out on the internet sponsor a lap boom 59 laps gone like nothing for 50 right. bucks now they're doing you know sponsor you know uh, more money you know hundred dollar donations in honor or in memory of and which many right. motorsports just jumped on board and you know we put up a hundred dollars in honor and memory of Bob Billadu you know right that's great, a good deal great driver down here in the southern part of the state that you know Passed right. away last year. So. I mean, yeah, last year we got hit hard. <sighs> I mean, yeah. it, it stinks that you, you get to a point where to really recognize and, and acknowledge these guys, yeah. they have to pass away. But you know what? After what happened at Beach Ridge, you know, with Bob in the week after, um, you know, the whole deal with, with this and John and these people stepping up, right. and, you know, these people, donations and companies and... You know, it really shows you what kind of person John Fippen was and, you know, just... Right, because, I mean, we you can't forget guys like John Fippen, Gary Belfour, Bob and Bob Bill, You know, they, they made this sport what it is right. today, you know, just like the guys at Summerfest. Guys at all, yeah. You know? So, and uh, one thing they also been doing is uh, going around presenting some sportsmanship awards, uh, you know, a little special award, and it's tied in with the wreath across America. They're getting their name on a wreath that goes down. To John the Linehan's involved you know, in that. John Linehan's involved in Wally, and you're going to see a clip here coming up that shows some of the sportsmanship presentations from this past weekend that they presented. And, uh, up to Speedway 95. Up to Speedway yeah. 95, and, you know, gives you a little more insight of what this thing's all about. So we're going to watch this, and we're going to take a break after that, and we'll come back. I mean... Mr. Greg Emerson here going to wrap up this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports. Well, on the track and in the pits, it looks like Emma Libby is a recipient of that for the White City High Show. Congratulations, Emma. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Emma and her crew, they're going to be showing real good sportsmanship in the pits. She certainly has on the racetrack. For a rookie driver, she's almost a rookie driver. I guess this is her second year of competing here at Speedway 95. Second full year. Ah, here comes trouble. You can say anything you want, Wally, as long as it's fit to print. I just want to let you know that this is the first John Fippen Sportsmanship Award given in the state of Maine this year. And we had a choice of, there were five people in the running for it. And there were some past guys in here. Some late model sportsman drivers, street stocks from Oxford, Reno, New Hampshire, Beach Ridge, Spud Speedway, and Speedway 95. They had a meeting last night. And some of the people that had a vote in this were Steve Perry from the Racing Paper and quite a few other people. So I don't want anybody to take this. This is the first John Fippen Trophy awarded. And you Wednesday night fans are looking at a star right here. But she beat out Johnny Clark and all those past racers and became the first recipient of the John Fippen Sportsmanship Award. Yes, John, John, stand up, you look at, please stand up. This is an honor right here, and we're seeing history in the making right here.
at Southern Main Motors. We're celebrating Jeep's 70th anniversary with our spring event. Get the vehicle you want at a price no one else can touch. Like a 2011 Jeep Compass, leased for only $239 a month for 39 months. Or a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee, leased for only $299 a month. Plus, right now, used car values are at an all-time high. Bring in your own vehicle and drive off in a brand new car. With savings this big, it's no wonder Southern Main Motors is out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealer. Visit SouthernMainMotors.com. All of us at Moody's Collision Centers would like to thank you for supporting us for over 30 years. We all own stock in Moody's and have a vested interest in you and your vehicle. The people at Moody's Collision Centers are part of the community and our reputation is very important to us. We take pride in our work and guarantee our repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. At Moody's Collision Center, we care about our customers. So when your insurance company asks where you want to go, tell them Moody's, Moody's Collision, Collision Centers. Centers. Four convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, and now Portland. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you this week by LKQ. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Route 202, Gorham. Now this week, Greg, uh, Oxford wraps up their Saturday night program and will be crowning their champions, you know. Yep, it's a big night for those guys. It's the end of the year. It's coming. You know, we talked earlier about the Oxford Act race this past weekend, you know. And yeah. Some shining stars. <laughs> Listen, Austin Terrio is on a roll. I mean, he finished second in the act race overall, yeah, in the second segment, and 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 uh, over on the overall at Loudon, and then he comes to Oxford, one week later, and finishes second at Oxford, and the last time he ran Oxford, he had a third. Yeah. I mean. And what's changed? In his family stuff. That's right. So, sometimes bigger isn't always better. No, I mean. Except when you come to men. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. He's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they they've got their stuff together with that car, yeah, and, and I think it, and the whole team, Austin's dad, Steve, Terry, they, everything is happy. He's now. on a roll. You know, on, on a side note to that, we we know that Nick Sweet out of Vermont finished second in the Oxford 250 in his car, and he has since got into the car that Austin was driving for RPM, yeah. and he finished 12th. So, I'm not saying Austin wasn't getting good stuff, but. You know, sometimes that second car, you know, Brian Hall's on his game. You can't, you yeah. know, I mean, he finished third this week. So. Right. And then Dave Farrington, huh? I mean, they, how about yeah. run by Dave Farrington? I think how he finished he eighth. Qualified for the 250. He was pretty pumped up. Now he's got a top 10 finish in an ACT race. There was yeah. 36 cars started, 20 of them from Maine. Yeah. You know? So, you know, it's a good, good for those guys, you know. And then the Mainly Motorsports TV 400, right? That's coming, coming up. up. Let me tell you something. Old team Mainly Motorsports. Got it done today at Richmond Cotting Speedway. Okay, start the day off. Bruce Pluff. Okay, Pluffy got, Pluffy got it got back in Pluffy a car. Got back in a car. Yesterday it was it was bad. Pluffy raced half the race. He was off the track more than he was on. He had to park it because he got so much dust on his shield he couldn't see. He looked like Pigpen <laughs> off the penis. Walking, <laughs> the dust is right. Didn't give up. Didn't give up. Right. Been up there helping my daughter all year when he can and stuff. Today he gets it in there and he pulls off a win. I'll tell you, and it's one of those ones where the crowd, everybody wanted to see it. You know, was that his and first win? First win, and here we are with some photos with Pluffy and first win ever, and he pretty pumped up. So, Pluffy's a great guy, so Pluffy's that's cool. Pluffy's awesome, right? We saw you saw a little Pluffy a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. So then what happens? My, the next driver in the camp, Alicia Perry, goes out running the senior sportsman class, right? The top division up there. She gets it done, right? Yeah. You know, puts that one in victory lane. So now we got one more in our camp, Ivan Kafel, and uh, runs with us and does a good job, right? Don't want to put a pressure on him, but we're looking for the sweep, right? And Ivan backs it up and wins his third race of the so year. So Team Mainly Motorsports team took mainly the sweep. Team Mainly Motorsports took the sweep up there, and I'll tell you, the buzz is on. Did you walk out on the track with your broom or something? That's a good one. I should have a broom, huh? <laughs> no, I ain't going to do the broom thing, no. But it was a good, I'll tell you, there was some good racing up there this week. The yeah. blue plate race, the unrestricted, it was, and everybody's getting their game together because they want the, the big, big trophy hardware, yeah. you know, from the Mainly Motorsports TV 400. And remember, folks, anybody that's coming up that weekend, wants to stay in the area, doesn't want to travel, you got the motel deal, call one of these motels that you see scrolling on the back scroll, uh, go to our website and uh, tell them you want the Mainly Motorsports rate. 70 bucks. Hey, I could even come clean your room. I mean, you never know. I could show up, you know, we could, whatever. Yeah. It's just, you know, so 
that's going to be a big deal, Greg. Right. That is going to be a big deal. And uh, I'm out, as any promoter would, salesperson, right? Saturday night at the beach, <laughs> a couple of little boys, Dan McKeg's boys, right? They, are, we, are you coming to my race? The only race they ran last year, they raced it, right? Got some hardware, won some prizes. We get back to the shop last night, and, and they're like, Dad, Dad, Dad. And Steve Perry gave us his car. <laughs> I gave him my business cards, right? How old are they? Five, six, seven years? Six, six I believe. Six, yeah. right? So what do I do? I want to pass my business card off, right? Because now if them boys can irritate their father enough into bringing them, right? What's going to happen? Team Naughty Forty shows up, and there's 15, 20 extra people, right? So what? It was a business move, right? It was a business move. But no, really, the kids had a great time last year. Yeah. I really hope that, you know, they get a chance to come up there and race with some of the other kids. And, you know, it's, it's right. a huge deal. It's, yeah. it's fun up there, as you've seen in some of the photos we've been showing these kids. And, you know, it's just, it, it, it's the next gen. Where'd Bobby Timmons and Tyler King come from? Right. Richmond Go Cotton Cats. Speedway. Right. And this is the next generation, you know. And, you know, one of the photos, this photo right here, that's Austin Terrace, which is Jay Cushman's son. Braxton Rowe, which is Benji Rowe's boy. Those, right on they're going to be in pro stock someday. You know what I mean? So this is, yeah, this is what it's all about. And then Labor Day, is it Labor Day weekend, the Spud 150? Where Austin Terrio was discovered. Discovered. Where, where a little old TV show by the name of Mainly Motorsports introduced <laughs> you guys to Austin Terrio. Brought him, you know, not that they wouldn't have figured it out, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I brought him down here, put him on Exposure the air. Exposure doesn't hurt. You know, and then, boom, look what's happened Right. Well, two, three years later, so... Listen, I, I can't talk enough about the kid because I met him up to Oxford, and the, like I've told everybody since Oxford, there's something about the kid that puts him on your radar. Yeah, and, and that's and what he I said. And he's been backing it up. And that's what I said when I, you know, had, had my right. show there, that this kid's got it. Uh, right. You know, this kid's got it. And I'm not saying we're going to be able to watch him on Sundays, like Kyle Busch winning another race, you know, but... And what's Kyle Busch do when he's in Maine? Right. He watches mainly motorsport. That's right, baby. So, uh, you know, a lot of things happening. The Oxford Mud Run, we touched on that a little bit earlier in the show. and you know. So to wrap it up, we got Oxford Championships ending this weekend. We got John Fippen Memorial 59-lap race both on Saturday night. White and Mountain with the Pro All-Star Series Sunday. Sunday. And then, and then Labor Day weekend, we got the Spud 150. And then we got the Oxford Mud Run is the same weekend. Yeah, the Oxford Mud Run. Then the following weekend, the Mainly Motorsports TV 400. Right. Right? And then what's after that? The Pass, Pass 400. 400. So, and don't forget, like I said, the Fippin Race this weekend, the Mud Run's the following week. A lot of great things happen in the state of Maine as motorsports season kind of wraps up and heads off into snow season. So, for Greg, I'm Steve, and I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Mainly, Mainly Motorsports. Motorsports. To order copies of a show, send a check of money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports, 326 Roosevelt Trail, Wyndham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show.